you for joining me. Uh, I'm Bill Catelby, CEO of Actinogen Medical. We're an ASX listed company uh, developing a, uh, a number of cortisol inhibitors with our lead compound being uh, a drug Xanamem and uh, we're developing that in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, this is a differentiated mechanism of action quite clearly, not an amyloid, not a tau compound. Um, it, we are developing uh, Xanamem, a first-in-class brain penetrant 11-beta HSD1 enzyme inhibitor. The 11-beta HSD1 enzyme activates cortisol in uh, the cells throughout the body, but particularly in the brain, in the, neuro, in the uh, hippocampus and frontal cortex. And uh, the mechanism of action has been validated uh, by a number of independent uh, research studies. Um, it's a targeted, uh, targeted approach we're taking, developing Alzheimer's. Potentially, we have uh, a number of other indications we can develop, but Alzheimer's quite clearly is the main um, uh, theme of our development with a, an addressable market of uh, over $7.5 billion. Um, the target indication of Alzheimer's um, has, is underpinned by efficacy work in animal data and we're currently in clinical stage of development. In fact, uh, in late November, we completed our phase two trial recruitment, uh, 186 patients uh, in uh, Australia, USA and UK uh, and uh, the readout from those results is due in uh, barely six months from now. We undertook a safety and interim analysis, uh, as I'll show you, uh, which gave us confidence to continue with the trial. Uh, we have a number of potential upsides, uh, other indications beyond just Alzheimer's, and we have initiated a number of other additional peripheral studies so that by May, June this year, when our Alzheimer's trial reads out, we will have a substantial uh, data set to develop our plans going forward. Um, our research is fully funded, um, and, uh, and as I say, uh, the pipeline opportunity is very substantial. Supporting us is a very uh, significant uh, and well-recognized advisory board as I'll show you later. Um, as I say, we're in clinical stage of development, having spent upwards now probably of $50 million invested. Uh, well over 150 patients have been treated with our, our drug. Safety, PK, PD is exactly as expected um, and predicted. The mechanism of action, uh, very differentiated from other uh, Alzheimer's drug development and uh, validated research um, uh, and uh, um, I am confirming uh, both the, the symptomatic and potentially disease modifying effect of um, our drug in animals and uh, equally uh, the effect of cortisol inhibition has been demonstrated in humans and we have very good patent protection out to at least 2031. So the principle behind cortisol and Alzheimer's has been demonstrated in numerous epidemiological studies. This is just reflecting uh, one or two of the, uh, the uh, current studies. On your left is a graph showing a, a fairly uh, typical um, uh, design of, uh, of uh, uh, study uh, reported out on, uh, on studies showing uh, from cognitively normal uh, with um, cognitively normal with normal cortisol uh, through to an AD population with raised cortisol, and this is repeated whether you measure the cortisol in CSF as this is plasma, um, uh, saliva uh, across the uh, the patient population. Uh, there is a clear association between chronically elevated cortisol and the uh, uh, development and progression of Alzheimer's disease. Um, one very compelling study was produced by the ABLE group, a consortium you'd be very familiar with, 
Uh, they've produced some 200 peer-reviewed papers uh, from their uh, 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 prospective 10-year uh, study of normal aging uh, in, uh, in uh, over a thousand um, healthy volunteers in Australia. And uh, their paper on cortisol demonstrated quite clearly that persistently raised cortisol in a cognitively normal population was associated with a much higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. And a point that is made is that uh, in 65-year-olds, uh, there is at least a 50% uh, chance of raised cortisol. So there is a, a, a clear convergence of age, cortisol, and Alzheimer's in the aging population. So uh, with that evidence, uh, Edinburgh University, who undertook the initial uh, research, uh, uh, developed the, the drug over the last 10 years and undertook a, uh, a confirmatory animal study in a TG2576 rodent model. And uh, on your uh, left, you can see a cognitive uh, benefit, a clear cognitive benefit that was shown uh, by inhibiting uh, cortisol in 28 days. So very rapid response was demonstrated in this, in this animal model um, of cognitive uh, benefit uh, to inhibiting cortisol centrally. Equally, intriguingly, but very pleasingly, a uh, amyloid benefit was seen as well, also within the same 28 days of treatment. Quite clearly, if we can replicate this in, uh, in humans, we have a very significant drug on our hands. Um, and with that background, we initiated some 18 months ago our phase two study. Um, we've now uh, enrolled 186 patients, and as, as I say, enrollment is, is complete. Uh, enrolled in uh, Australia, the U USA, and UK, um, 10 milligrams daily for 12 weeks. Um, that 12-week treatment replicates what we've seen in both animals and humans that the response would be expected to be seen within four to six weeks. The endpoints that we have used in the study are endpoints you'd be very familiar with. We are powered to ADIS COG 14, but have ADCOMS as a co primary endpoint, and then a number of secondary endpoints, again, very familiar to any Alzheimer's study. All of these will read out within the next six months. The uh, results of this will read out within the next six months and on the back of that we will then be able to formulate our plans going forward. Um, we undertook an interim analysis as I said the first 50 patients this was done in May uh, last year uh, both efficacy and safety undertaken by DSMB to ensure obviously uh, uh, um, um, uh, the, the uh, data integrity and the blinding was maintained throughout. A second safety uh, analysis done in, in August, and in both cases the DSMB recommended continuation without modification. We're going to do a final uh, safety analysis uh, in a month or two, but we are very comfortable that the safety of the product um, uh, is uh, as expected and the uh, efficacy design of the study uh, appears to be quite appropriate. And on the back of that, we initiated a number of other additional studies uh, in the middle of last year, a target occupancy study, a higher dose safety study to uh, do higher dose studies if necessary going forward, and obviously the uh, longer term toxicology studies uh, to allow us to go forward into phase three. Um, the uh, more of the detail of each of these three studies are shown on the slide here. The um, uh, obviously target occupancy study is in multiple doses and to define uh, optimum uh, enzyme inhibition, uh, particularly in the hippocampus and frontal cortex 
where the 11-beta-HSD1 enzyme is particularly heavily concentrated. The higher dose safety studies to explore higher dose study, higher dose um, uh, usage of uh, Xanamem should it be necessary going forward either in Alzheimer's or in uh, any of the other potential indications that our drug uh, w could be developed for and the animal toxicology studies um, required by regulators for longer term studies. So adding that all together, this is the um, development program that we have underway right at this moment. Xanadu, Xanamem in Alzheimer's disease, our phase two study, uh, fully enrolled and reading out, as you see, in May, June this year. A target occupancy study will equally read out in May, June this year, as will the first cohort of the higher dose safety and the uh, first uh, studies in the longer term toxicology. So within the next uh, five to six months, we will have a substantial data set on which to uh, inform our further development of Xanamem going forward. At the same time, we've been approached and we're well aware of numerous other opportunities for the development of uh, Xanamem because the 11-beta HSD1 is expressed systemically. There are a number of potential other indications uh, that the drug can be developed for that range across diabetes, schizophrenia, depression, post-myocardial infarction, PTSD. That review is underway right at the moment and uh, additional indications uh, are planned uh, in the near-term future. So we are now uh, within five months of a very substantial threshold for our company. The clinical development is underway. The full uh, program will read out in May, June. We're fully funded through to that point. Um, and obviously, after that, uh, a greater uh, development plan will be initiated. And that will um, inevitably require um, uh, partnering or licensing, uh, we clearly can take it forward ourselves, but inevitably uh, we can see an opportunity for uh, Big Pharma to join us in the ongoing development of our drug in the second half of this year and beyond. Uh, the opportunity, we've modeled the opportunity for our drug, and as we all know, it is massive. Uh, the addressable market for uh, Xanamem just in mild Alzheimer's disease is uh, um, over $7 billion, let alone the potential for prodromal and, uh, and at-risk patients. And I just reflect on the fact that uh, Abel's study demonstrated that cognitively normal people with a high cortisol are at risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. There is the real potential that the at-risk population could equally be treated with Xanamem going forward. So a huge opportunity uh, in the treatment or the prevention of Alzheimer's disease. And it's for that reason that, as we know, Big Pharma is particularly interested in this market. And this is demonstrated by just some of the deals that have been done uh, in recent times. Uh, it's noteworthy that the majority of them have been in non-amyloid, -am novel approaches, non-amyloid approaches, which is what our drug clearly presents. As I've said, um, our uh, research endeavors and our development endeavors have been uh, supported by uh, two very significant advisory boards. On your uh, right is the actual discovery group from Edinburgh University who w have been working on uh, the development of the concept of 11-beta HSD1 and cortisol inhibition. 
as a cognitive enhancer and a potential treatment for Alzheimer's disease for some 15 years. We licensed uh, the uh, family of compounds uh, four, four years ago and continued the development, uh, but we continue to have them as a very sig significant resource to assist us in our development. And uh, Edinburgh University is one of our leading shareholders. So they do have substantial skin in the game. Uh, more significantly for Alzheimer's, on your left is the clinical advisory board that's supporting us and has supported us very enthusiastically right from day one. Uh, Jeff Cummings, very familiar to, uh, to, in fact, all three of these gentlemen would be very familiar to you, but Jeff Cummings, Colin Masters, and Craig Ritchie, reflecting the geographic spread of where we've developed the drug. Um, and uh, we just had a, uh, a major advisory board meeting in Barcelona aligned with CTAD, and uh, their input to the ongoing development is... Uh, continues to be enormous. So to wrap up, this is just to reiterate uh, the points that I have made, that we're a differentiated mechanism of action. Our drug presents a differentiated mechanism of action. First in class, brain penetrant inhibitor of cortisol production through inhibiting 11-beta-HSD1. Um, the mechanism of action and the research that underlines what we what we're doing has been validated in both humans and animals. Uh, clearly, Alzheimer's is our, is our major target, but there are a number of other diseases that can be targeted. But we are in uh, the final stages of the clinical, phase two clinical development with the data readout uh, in barely six months from now, uh, following a very uh, positive uh, interim analysis. There, the, uh, on the back of that interim analysis, we initiated a number of other studies to round out the data package, and on top of that, we're evaluating further indications uh, to develop. And as you've seen, um, all of this initiative is very well supported by a, uh, a very solid uh, set of advisory board members. So with that, thank you very much indeed, and I hope I have time for a few questions if necessary. Thank you.